Good afternoon everyone, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press. Welcome to this MDC Alliance press conference, which will be an address by the Portfolio Secretary for Local Government, Mr. Cecil Zidzai, on the state of local government in Zimbabwe. However, before we get into that, a few remarks. Zimbabwe faces a crisis in the functioning of local authorities and the ability of municipalities and town councils to deliver basic services to the citizens. The challenges faced by local authorities have been compounded by a harsh economic environment which has crippled citizens' capacity to pay their rates and system systemic interference in the operations of our respective councils. However, the crisis Zimbabwe faces in the administration of its local authorities is but a symptom of the broader legitimacy and bad governance crisis and general dysfunction that pervades our nation. We reiterate that the root cause of Zimbabwe's multiple crises remains a political gridlock anchored by a crisis of legitimacy emanating from the November 2017 military coup and the flawed 2018 harmonized election. This has been compounded by four decades of destructive, predatory, and exclusive politics, which has created a society captured by a broken down social contract, a deep lack of trust, alienation of the ordinary citizen, indifference, intolerance, and polarization. Now, at the core of the local government crisis is the refusal by ZANU-PF to implement the constitutional imperative of devolution. Devolution is a necessary vehicle for doing away with the over-centralized system of government, for deepening democracy, promoting locally driven development, improving the delivery of public services, and promoting national integration and peace while recognizing diversity. Because of the delay and lack of political will to wholeheartedly implement devolution as required by our constitution, the citizens have been unable to reap the benefits of fiscal, administrative and political autonomy. As we've seen in recent weeks and months, the veil of political autonomy is meaningless if it is not accompanied by fiscal autonomy, which entails the ability to raise and spend revenue by a local authority. In the example of Zanara controlling road funds, but an expectation that councils fix our roads quickly comes to mind. We also have, as you'll hear from Mr. Cecil Zizai, the absence of administrative autonomy and the continuous interference by zanu pf functionaries, including the Ministry of Local Government, the Local Government Board, and the Provincial Development Coordinators. Local authorities urgent, urgently need administrative reform. A body exercising devolved powers usually enjoys some form of administrative autonomy. This form of autonomy entails that a subnational or local units can appoint and dismiss its staff as well as determine remuneration levels. It also means that they have some discretion to determine their own admin administrative structures and procedures. Now I've said before, and I will say again, that Zimbabwe is at a crossroads where we are faced with the battle for the soul of our nation. Democracy is not only under threat, but it's been bludgeoned by ZANU-PF. Just yesterday, six of our local, of our Midlands Youth Assembly members were punished and convicted for participating in a peaceful protest, and yet Section 59 of our Constitution guarantees um, the right to protest and demonstrate peacefully. These are some of the reasons why our nation is in a state of deep crisis. There is an urgent need to reform 
not only central government, but the functioning of local government, by inter alia aligning the Urban Councils Act to the new constitution, to ensure that elected council officials have real power to implement administrative action, to run their own budgets, to hire and manage their own staff, and for the post of executive mayor to be reinstated, to remove the current anomaly where our councils have responsibility but no power. Ladies and gentlemen, the call to action could not be clearer. As President Nelson Chamisa has said time and again, we must come together and form a united front to defeat ZANU-PF. ZANU-PF continues to hamstring the functioning of our local councils, as you'll hear today. They've launched a massive campaign of political persecution of our leading council officials and mayors. The most recent example being the persecution of Mayor Jacob Mafume. We continue to demand his urgent release. We reject the sliding back of Zimbabwe into a one-party state. It's time for the citizens to fight back because ZANU-PF has destroyed Zimbabwe. We remain engaged and refuse to be sucked into apathy. ZANU-PF must go. The NDC Alliance has no hesitation in leading the charge, which is why we stand here today, firm, as the nation's only credible democratic alternative and ready to win Zimbabwe for change. The big fights that the MDC Alliance has taken on, the fight for a people's government, the fight for legitimacy and democracy, the fight for livelihoods and a better life for all Zimbabweans, the fight against corruption, the fight in defense of the constitution and constitutionalism, all require unity of purpose among democratic and progressive forces. We have no doubt that the fight to win Zimbabwe for change, the fight for a better, brighter, and more prosperous Zimbabwe will be won, which is why we are championing the struggle. We must return Zimbabwe to prosperity, including through the smooth functioning of our cities and our towns. We must revive the Zimbabwean dream. We must ensure nobody is left behind and that our great nation begins to work for the many and not the few. And so without further ado, I'll defer proceedings to our Portfolio Secretary for Local Government, Mr. Cecil Zidzai, who will present an address on the state of local government in Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> As uh, introduced by our spokesperson and social guy, Secretary for Local Government and Rural Development in the MDC Alliance. And today, um, I appreciate a lot that uh, uh, you have presented yourselves so that we can uh, talk about local government from our perspective as the MDC Alliance. Uh, but what is the context? Slide one, Mazan. Uh, the context of local government is around uh, issues of shared power, uh, devolved power among three tiers of government, namely central government, uh, provincial and metropolitan councils and local authorities. So there is that uh, geometric relationship between these three tiers of government. Uh, close, uh, uh, sorry, the next uh, slide talks to issues of the laws uh, regulating or creating the relationships between the three tiers of government. We've got the constitution which is very clear on how local authorities should work. It's very clear, it emphasizes that uh, local authorities uh, should be managed by elected people only, and with emphasis. Uh, then you've got the Urban Councils Act, you've got the Rural District Council Act, you've got the Regional Town and Country Planning Act, which is a highly contagious issue at the moment, as we shall discuss. Uh, as we move forth, and uh, you've got the Traditional Leadership Act. 
if you look at all these acts, they are not friendly to the provisions of the Constitution. And therein lies uh, the genesis of our problem in this country. That uh, people went to a referendum uh, and 97% of the people said yes to all the provisions in the Constitution, including devolution. And there is like seven years down the road, uh, there is no appetite to make sure that this, these provisions, these uh, demands of the Constitution are implemented. So what then is the character of our intergovernmental relationships? What is the character of the relationship between central government and provincial government? Between provincial governments and local authorities, both the rural and urban local authorities? Uh, the relationship is best described as fraught with issues of interference, uh, particularly at local authority level. Central government has got a serious appetite to the central government as well as to the local authorities. And this is a disease, this is a problem that we, together, across the political divide, we have to deal with this if Zimbabwe should move forward. Look at certain important issues that I want to talk to uh, so that we can emphasize and graphically. Uh, look at the issues of interference. Look at procurement. Um, a lot of people talk about corruption by councillors, etc. And be known to many, um, procurement in this in all local authorities is controlled by local government, the, the central government. And uh, unlike in the past, where the councils used to have what they called procurement boards, those have been abolished and replaced by. Uh, committees of staff. It's a big problem. We'll go back to this and see how that affects uh, the efficacy of self-delivery in our local authorities. Let's look at staffing. We'll also get into details around it. Staff recruitment in all local authorities from director and above, town clerk, directors, uh, is all done by central government. Budgets, as you all know, uh, are budgets are passed by central government. If central government says no, then that's it. And in most cases, local authorities lose three, four, five months of revenue uh, because of delayed passing of budgets. Normally, the minister will pass out the budgets in April, and that's uh, uh, four months of revenue lost. Innovation. Uh, these councils come up with very bright ideas on how to best manage their, uh, their, their territory. Uh, but uh, these innovations are normally delayed, stopped, truncated by central government. Again, we'll get into details around this. Uh, confidence. You know, this, this is one of the key issues that lacks in the relationship matrix between our local authorities and central government. There is lots of mistrust. You can touch the mistrust. If you go to Harare City Council today, it's palpable. You can play with it like a juggle with the mistrust. You can touch it, you can see it, it's there. And under those circumstances, it's very difficult to deliver. You know, it's difficult enough to do the job. It's worse if it's made more difficult by deliberately uh, by uh, central government and other players. Uh, issues of control, uh, you know, way back I remember when the late uh, Vice President Musika was Minister of Local Government, may his soul rest in peace, uh, he was a good man, but he had seriously different beliefs on local government compared to ourselves. He said local government exists uh, at the pleasure of central government. Wrong. Central government uh, it should not determine whether the people have said they want local government through the constitutional provisions. They voted for local government. So indeed, local government should exist at the pleasure of the people. Issues of resources. Uh, very big 
problem there uh, in that uh, uh, fiscal transfers from the sender. You know, most of you know government used to have the public sector uh, in, uh, investment P PSIP uh, programs, which used to go into uh, infrastructure uh, development, you know, try to make infrastructure a little more pleasant, match the times, but it has all dried up. And when you, when you get it, it's inequitable. Well, what a problem that it's insufficient. Well, the worst, the bigger problem is that it's inequitable. There is no formula, there is no predetermined formula on how these transfers go to councils. I remember when I was Deputy Minister, uh, we gave more money to Uzumba Maramba Fungwe for roads than we gave to Harare. I've got no problem with that. Yes, we must develop the rural areas, but we need issues of equity. It must be equitable. Where is the more population? Where is the more need? So we, we are generally talking about issues of the state of local government, yes, of local government in the country. And uh, in summary, we observe that there is an environment of uh, intergovernmental competition rather than cooperation. Central government competes with local authorities rather than cooperate with local authorities. And uh, naturally, it, it's a poisoned environment where the parent uh, is not taking their responsibility around the lower tiers of government. Uh, laws regulating uh, work of tiers of government, they are not aligned with the Constitution. So all these Urban, Urban Councils Act, you know, Rogers Council Act, uh, Regional Town and Planning Act, all these laws are fall foul of the constitution. So it's like uh, banditry, governance banditry in the country. Uh, and most dangerous is the politically polarized environment in our matrix. Uh, there is serious political polarization and uh, uh, this determines, this leads to inequity around uh, transfers, it leads to uh, you know, dysfunctionalization of committees of council through uncalled for and illegal recalls. Uh, so these have rendered our local authority dysfunctional. Some of the committees cannot even form a quorum. Uh, councils themselves cannot form quorum. Uh, and they can't sit to dispense with business of the people as they desire because sometimes they just get arrested in the middle of a council meeting, discreting in the chambers. These are respected places where the business of the people is transacted. And uh, central government has got the audacity to disturb these. Uh, so as a result, the truth is that uh, the state of local government at the moment is that it doesn't deliver to the expectations of the people. So what are the truths? Um, what are the truths around self-delivery? Uh, that's not a manufactured picture. Neither is it a Fumbuga project. Uh, it's uh, some of our, our roads that have become impossible. It's a truth around self-delivery. Uh, shelter, the contagious issue of shelter at the moment, it's a reality around failure uh, to deliver, uh, you know, uh, the neighborhoods, even the built up environments are dilapidated and uh, are not pleasant. Um, recreational and amusement parks are non existent anymore, safety and security, um, if the moonlight is poor, you might be marked on your way home. Uh, transport for committing publics is erratic and you know the list goes on and on. People are not happy about, uh, at all uh, about the services. This, this is the reality, but we want to say, yes, this is the reality, how do we move forward? So, 
what is the truth? A clear truth is that uh, uh, the rural urban migration is the reality. And Harare, for example, the population has increased twofold uh, since 1980. But there is no matching investment in infrastructure. That's the truth. What are the hindrances to self delivery? Some of it we have already talked about uh, as we do this, Mazango. Uh, look at procurement is done by central government. Budgets are passed, passed by central government. There is no flexibility to explore uh, local uh, creativity. You know, uh, the, the institutions, uh, the, particularly the institution of the mayor, is seriously enfeebled. Uh, so you've got the, this part-time uh, mayor. I mean, if you look at Harare, compare Harare uh, with the Ministry of SMEs, and tell me which one deserves to have a full-time person looking after it. Harare is a big, 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 big economy and certainly it needs a strengthened uh, uh, institution. It needs uh, the mayor to be uh, executive, uh, without doubt. Senior council staff are employed by central government. They are rewarded by central government. I mean, central government determines how much a town clerk gets. Uh, they are dismissed by central government. As a result, as they say, he who pays the piper determines what tune is played. Mm -hmm. So there you are, you've got your mayors sitting there with the staff that reports elsewhere. It doesn't work. The central government is very much reluctant to implement devolution. For central government, the belief that if you share power, you lose power is paramount, and yet it's not a truth. You share power, you strengthen uh, government. You know, you, government looks weak, but it's strong if it's sharing power. Government looks strong, but it's weak when it's over-centralized. It becomes an institution which has got a heart or a war. The heart is a war because you don't believe in the next person. You don't believe in the next institution. You believe in yourself only. It doesn't work. It's never meant to be like that. And there is excessive interfering by central government. People don't believe this, but I've said before that uh, the ministers, I don't know what the problem, a minister of local government. You get a guy like uh, Lai Moyo, who is a top-class local government practitioner, who is a very sensible person, but appoint him to Ministry of Local Government. He wants to determine the number of teaspoons of sugar in Gomba's tea. He wants to uh, run uh, local government. I don't know where it's lost. Is it the system? Is it? Clearly it's the system. Let's go back to issues uh, I've spoken about and I just want to graphically talk to issues of water treatment and centralization of procurement. We all know that uh, all the procurement of uh, chemicals for treatment of water uh, is done centrally. Not only is it done centrally, but central government has also said all procurement has to be, you have to buy all your requirements from one company called Complex. And let me tell you what Complex does with respect to a few of the water treatment chemicals, like hydrated lime, sulfuric acid, um, aluminium sulfate, activated carbon, uh, sodium silicate, they simply import. Go to Zambia and get a hydrogen lime at 120 US dollars a time. Transport it here, stock it a bit, and Harare buys it for 500 dollars. 
this affects. So central government is sucking nearly $300 from the struggling city of Harare through a well-calculated uh, method of taking away money from the people and uh, weakening the local authority, making sure that it fails to deliver. If city of Harare could just access Forex and buy item lion from Zambia itself, they would land it here for $200. That would reduce the cost of treating water very, very significantly. Therein lies the uh, reverse side of uh, economies of scale. Economies of scale in this case uh, fail. This principle fails because of corruption. The added cost is corruption. Now, what, what used to happen is that uh, Zimfos used to manufacture aluminum sulfate. Zimfos used to manufacture GNW minerals, used to manufacture um, uh, uh, lime, hydrogen lime. Uh, Zimfos used to manufacture sulfate. What has gone wrong? Why? What has gone wrong? Let's move in that direction, spend money, uh, resuscitate Zimfos so that. Uh, our water can be cheaper than uh, it is at the moment. A case of interference with senior staff recruitment. In, in, in uh, 2016, the city of Harare went all through a very rigorous process of looking for a town clerk. And uh, I, 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 I I, I, I was sector for local government then, and our mayor was Mr. Manyeni. And I can tell you, he did a very good job around the recruitment of town clerk. You know, they went through uh, professional consultants, etc. And we ended up with James Mushor, a renowned banger, a man who could structure uh, a complicated and effective financial arrangement for the city of Harare. He is the, he is the man the best. The day he was appointed, Selvia the minister then said, fired him and actually told him that uh, the town clerk of Harare is the second biggest job in the country and it won't be taken by anybody who is not Zambia. Period. And uh, there we lost the capacity to turn around and around. We believe that uh, uh, James Mishore and the credentials, the, the qualities, and the qualifications, and the knowledge, and the networks uh, which would have, have enabled us to, him to turn around and around. But political opportunity will not allow. A chance to uh, get to the feeding trough through corruption at Harare would not happen with him. Uh, people have to understand this. And central government has got this knack as well of uh, interfering with the uh, stifling uh, council's innovations. Uh, the city of Harare, for example, has a plan to unbundle uh, this unbundling strategy where they wanted to create uh, utilities so that you could have a water utility specifically specializing on water. And it this is how other jurisdictions do it to improve efficiency. No, it won't happen uh, because then the MGC will show its capacity to govern, able to deliver better, and so you won't do it. But they also wanted to remodel the service delivery uh, models, uh, look at a business approach, for example, uh, a refuse removal, they, want, they, they wanted to uh, do conversion of waste to energy, uh, but because of the Joint Venture Act, they have to go to central government and it takes forever before that can happen. And meanwhile, we are losing time, we are losing opportunities. So what, what is it? Are we just complaining? What would we do uh, as MDC uh, if uh, we were the managers of these complex relationships between our several tasks, government. So we will pursue a smart local governance um, 
system, and it's a system that we believe will deliver. What would we do? We would allow councillors to employ on merit and the reward that they feel. Uh, some of you know what happened in 2010 when the uh, central government allowed very, very um, uh, obnoxious, uh, uh, some used to call that pornographic salaries at City of Harare, where a town claim would be $37,000 US dollars. Central government. Um, what else would we do? <coughs> I just leave it a little bit there, for example. Um, a legislative agenda that will align the laws with the constitution. It's correct to do that. Uh, and there is a reason for the need for devolution so that you can extract the best potential out of the people, so that people can specialize uh, on their uh, particular peculiarities, you see. Um, the local government board is an unnecessary cost. It's a completely unnecessary cost. It's foul of the constitution. We would not go that direction. We would also, uh, in terms of legislation, make sure that uh, uh, our mayors who have certain qualifications, certain experience, our councillors, our committee chairpersons, we will create the certain qualification and, 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 and practical experience thresholds uh, below which you can't be uh, a mayor. Next. Local government funding, very critical area here. Very, very critical area. Uh, let's look at uh, fiscal devolution. I said we need equity and we need uh, sufficiency. A lot of people compare us with South Africa. In South Africa, uh, the DA is in control of the West, Western Cape, the EF, certain areas. But because there is a formula uh, on who gets what and how much, they are not excluded, they are not disadvantaged uh, from receiving what they should receive based on the formula that exists. So there we are. Uh, that's what smart local governance will do, whether it's a ZANU-PF uh, controlled council, or it's an MDC, or it's up or whatever. We we'll work on a formula that makes sure that the people, you know, the issue is the people. Make sure that the issues of the people in those localities can be funded. Okay, legislation will also make sure that uh, uh, you know, put through legislation to make sure that there is flexibility. Today, if a local authority uh, wants to borrow X amount of money to do certain uh, infrastructure work, it's so tortuous. Mm. You can't do it. It's in a it can't with this government. And they take pleasure in that because, uh, and yet, you know, they should be understanding that they are at the apex of the mix. Next, uh, intergovernmental relationships. You see at the moment, it's, it's important to create a platform to engender intergovernmental cooperation. That doesn't exist. What exists at the moment is a flurry of uh, directives, a recision of uh, resolution, etc. And there is no sitting down to talk around issues, you know, between the governments. So it's, it's, a, it's a big problem which needs uh, to be resolved. And uh, the, you also have a lot of center-periphery bullying in this country, you know. Uh, Mugutu will just go to Chitumbu and say, tomorrow you must demolish X, Y, Z. And if you don't, we'll fire you. If you don't, we'll strangle your revenue sources. So that sort of bullying is not good for, uh, for uh, delivery of services. Why are we procurement? I think we've dealt with that about. 
let's move to the next one. People in local government. We believe that uh, in local government there is a critical board P, participation of the people. People at the center of it all. So you see what the NAD recalls today where a person is elected by 6,000 people and one person recalls. Where are the people? Where are the people? Where are the people in the policy formulation? Where are the people around issues of implementation of certain policies or even crafting, sculpting those policies? People understand that. And I think this is our last uh, uh, slide. Very important. I just wanted to put that right at the bottom because people think um, when we talk about the need for a legitimate government, there is no clear understanding. People begin to think that we, it's an excuse. Uh, it's an excuse. But what happens if you have got a central government uh, that, that, as I say, whose heart is at war, which is fighting everybody. It's fighting the mayor, it's fighting residents' associations, it's fighting the common man on the street, it's fighting the poor, it's not fighting poverty. So that's the character of the central government. A legitimate government cares for the people because it knows it's there because of the people. But an illegitimate government doesn't care about the people because it knows it's in there because of guns and other things. In the absence of a legitimate government, it's very difficult for this country to move. It's very difficult for local authorities to deliver. There is serious interdependence between all these spheres of government. And if one of them is illegit, the whole chain breaks up. So I just thought we'd talk about that. We need a government that drives an economy that functions. We need a government that uh, sits down and says, uh, we are so much endowed with the uh, 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 special materials in this country to develop uh, the country. These endowments must benefit the people. And there is plenty of this. Zimbabwe, of the seven wonders of the world, two are in our boundaries. It's a unique thing. It's a first in platinum, maybe number two. It's first in uh, petalite, you know, lithium. It's the mineral of the future. It's first, uh, you know, there is no other big force. There is no other Zimbabwe rules. These are unique things that should, we should pivot on to develop this economy, to make sure that people can benefit from these endowments. We need a government uh, which does not compete or sabotage lower tiers of government. I mean, if you ask me, or if I ask you, what is really the role of Chigawa in Iran? His role is to put as many hurdles on the way of service delivery so that the MDC may doesn't look good. It can't be like that. The big snake should not bite us tail. But this one devours its tail. Um, we also want a central government which leaves a zero toler tolerance to corruption. A central government that doesn't chase small fish and leaves the sharks stealing. These are the solutions. This is how you can get to a smart uh, global governance system. And um, I know a person who come through uh, uh, I thank you for listening. Uh, thanks so much.
Thank you so much to our Secretary uh, for Local Government, Mr. Cecil Jitsai. We had a wonderful opportunity to draw on his rich experience in the sphere of local government. So at this point, without further ado, I'd like to open up uh, the platform for a few questions to those that have them, and then we'll, we'll proceed. So if you could kindly just raise your hand, indicate your name and house, and we'll take your questions. Yes, ma'am. Having said all this, what do you think is the way forward now as it is the situation bed as you said? What is the way forward from your point of uh, view as MDC Alliance? Well, I mean, uh, all this that we have said is a whole matrix of solutions to the challenges that we have. But central to the challenge is the issues around legitimacy. For as long as you've got a central government uh, with a heart at war, movement is very slow. Friction is too much. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, yes, Pastor, yes. Pastor from Newsman.com. I just want to ask uh, just a couple of questions, then maybe I will Maybe make... just ask one and then we'll do a round and All then right. I'll come back. I you, come back. you just briefly touched about the, um, the demolitions of uh, the illegal homes, when you put it that way. But you just touched it briefly. I just want to understand what role did your councillors or your party play in the recent demolitions in Mugiru? Firstly, in our language, the MDC Alliance, we have got nothing like an illegal settlement. We have got unplanned settlements. Uh, illegal has to be dealt with and uh, demolished. Unplanned settlements can be regularized. So, most of the houses that were uh, demolished in we in, in, in could have been regularized. Yes, a few could have been uh, demolished in pursuit of regularization. So it's sad that uh, uh, this keeps happening. And the footprint is indelibly written with respect to where it's passed through there. This is a miniature Muramba China. And there is, there is simply no other station that should take culpability for this except uh, Muguti, Chidao, Julai Moyo, ED and Zan. These demolitions were all done on court orders obtained by councils that you as the MDC Alliance need. Why did you get the court orders if you had no intention? In pursuit of regularization, we knew that in the process of regularization, certain homes would certainly suffer. It was never meant to go out and onto that housing estate and just demolish everything. That was not the meaning, that was not the spirit of the request we had in the courts. It was actually the end of the day if it had been left to us. And you know very well that before his uh, arrest, uh, Mayor Mafume clearly said we are going to execute these humanely. We will make sure that anything that can be regularized will be regularized. And only those few houses that cannot be regularized will be demolished in the interest of the greater public so that you can have uh, saves lands, so that you can have roads, you can put in sewer lines that you can put in water. That was the idea. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Costa, you said you had more than one question. Would you like to ask another no, no, I, I still want to follow up, maybe follow That's up on, okay. on the use of demolitions. Mm -hmm. Because Sorry. it's kind of, you're stating for my question, mm -hmm. what role did you play? Did you approve the demolitions? That's what I want to get from you. Did your councillors, did your party approve the demolitions of the recent ones in Ibudiru? I thought I'd answered that. That it's not in our character to push the poor deeper into poverty. We are a pro-poor pro party and we don't relate with the poor 
Chichwati is China. We don't do that. So our councillors know that position. Very clear. Uh, our councillors got these uh, orders way, way back, and they were busy uh, trying to find the most main way to implement, to execute. And what happens? The mayor gets arrested, the deputy mayor gets arrested, uh, councillors get uh, recalled, uh, and in the absence of policymakers, the ZAN PF functionaries in the manner of uh, the appointed town clerk and them execute in typical Zambia fashion. Yeah, I'm asking this because recently um, the provincial director, Mr. Mgut, I don't know his specific title, he actually said we are working together with the Harare City Council, which is dominated by councillors, to demolish, to pass a resolution. And it is your councillors, it is the Harare City Council that took uh, these um, people to court, and the court granted uh, an order in favor of them. Yes, I've said, I've said yes, uh, and the purpose of the orders was not to destroy the estates, but to enable regularization. Okay. Do we have anyone else? I, I just wanted to find out um, from the presentation, it seems that councillors are powerless they cannot do anything much. Why then do we have councillors? Should we just not abolish local government if things are in this land? Two things, blessing. Blessed. The first thing is that uh, we have learned from the past. In 2006, central government went out to take, out, take away the water delivery competence from local authorities and hand over to Zeno to send government if you want. And uh, a lot of us didn't fight sufficiently to retain that competence. Only two councils in this country fought together across the political divide to say this competence will not be taken away. And that is Bawayo and Mashiro. In 2008, when cholera came, it, it had all the areas that handed over competence to send government. The epicenter of cholera was a rally, Chitung, uh, Chitungwiza, uh, Chebutu, because we had ended, we had allowed, I was actually part of, uh, I was a mayor then, we allowed uh, central government to bully us and take that competence away, and they played around with that competence and led to cholera. The only place where there was no cholera was it coincidence. None in Mashingu, none from now. So we've learned from the past that we can't let down the people that fought for us. We will fight to the precipice in defense of the people that fought for us. And this is why if they recall all our councillors and leave one, we will allow that councillor to continue with the mandate in defense of the people. That's the first thing. The second thing is uh, we must fight for the democratic space, for the people with the people. We won't walk away from uh, 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 zones where the people have said, please, uh, we prefer your policies to Zanupia. We won't let down the people. It's unfair, it's wrong, it's weak. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to find out if there's any other questions or questions. Uh, uh, chemicals are being bought from SA at certain absurd prices. Um, seeing that you know already that these things are happening, it's, it's already affecting Zimbabweans at large. We also have issues to do with billings, whereby um, from Norway councils just raise their, their bills, and most people are already failing to pay, to pay these bills. You as, as a party, um, are you also p approving the increase of the billings? Because if you are, does it, does it not then contradict with you having the people at heart? Because people are paying for disposal of garbage, but the trucks are not coming. And people are paying their bills, their water bills, but people are going for weeks and months with no water. What are you as a council doing? you know, pertaining to the people's upkeep. 
in her in Zimbabwe? Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, and uh, the answer is very simple. We are doing a lot of things, including uh, fighting to remove an illegitimate government that has got no idea on how to deal with the economy. And that, that is the central problem. There is no possibility of any local authority. You can take, who is the best person in your opinion? You can take Nick Mangwana and make him mayor of Harare. He won't succeed as long as the sender is mismanaged, as long as the sender has no ideas how to improve the economy. Now we talk about increasing uh, your the rates, uh, the charges. Personally, to begin with, I'm very unfriendly to the sort of uh, taxes or revenue streams that are handed over to uh, local authorities. These are very unproductive, low-yielding uh, taxes, you know, your rates, your supplementary charges. Those cannot fund your needs. You need productive uh, uh, revenue streams. Revenue streams that give a major impact on uh, the size of pocket of your uh, local authorities so that this can be spent in the interest of the people. And if you look at the rate of inflation, look at it. How does your council even afford uh, they budgeted when we had a one-to-one, one-to-one uh, to the dollar today, it's one to X, X is up to you to say what it is. Um, so it makes it difficult. It makes it difficult for local authorities. But they do try, in my opinion. <coughs> because today when asked to make a choice, whether to go to Wilkins or to Harare Central, if you had a problem, where would you go to? Certainly you go to Wilkins. You go to Beatrice, infectious disease center, because your government institutions are killing bags. <clears throat> okay, we're going to take one more question in the interest of time. Kosti, you've got your oh, uh, I'm much more interested in these demolitions. I understand that uh, the city of Harare has got nearly paid court orders that have been granted in their favor. Are you going to execute that? Then, well, then, then number two is you mentioned about the interference of the government so much mm -hmm. and how it has crippled service delivery. I mean, so, you know, I mean I, I, even if we say MDC is running the, the country on paper, but practically it is the government that controls everything. So as a way forward, do you think it is the constitution, is it law that really needs to be changed? Really, I don't think uh, we should be talking about the law. The constitution. The constitution is right. It must be implemented. There must be political will to exercise of some of the power to sub-national governments so that they can make and deliver. We must all knock and chip at this monolith called the central government. It's the disaster that we all have. It's the elephant roaming in our rooms. We need a central government that is prepared to share power, to devolve power so that people can, you know, you can unleash the local potential, the pride, the good citizenship that you get uh, when people deal with their own issues. So it's not the constitution that you need to deal with. Yes, you need to align the laws to the constitution. But the biggest problem is what you need to do is to remove Munangagwa from power. Okay. There's the 30 so, to the so over nearly 30 court orders. The 30 court orders. Uh, interference has already come into place. We all have to work to stop it. But today Mguti has already published. Uh, July Moe has said we won't stop. Ooh, look, I mean, the spirit of the law is not exact pain on the citizens. But for them, the spirit of the law is to and you don't put any human face into it, and then you call yourself a government. 
Okay, so all that remains, members of the press, is for me to thank you very much for your time in coming today. We really, really appreciate this. I'd like to also thank our secretary, our portfolio secretary for local government and local authorities, uh, Mr. Cecil G. Zai, for his extremely insightful presentation and also creating the full context to help us understand why our local authorities are the way they are the extent to which uh, responsibility lies with the MDC, the extent to which power lies with central government. We're extremely grateful for that. Please have a Merry Christmas. Remember to mask up, wash your hands and respect physical distancing. Thank you very much.